<laughs> Welcome in to the Morning Glory Show. I hope you guys are excited for another episode because the Tennessee Titans are back at home this week as they come off the bye in that first one of the season in Miami on Monday night. And they take on the Indianapolis Colts, who are get, coming off a huge loss last week, giving the Jacksonville Jaguars their first win of the season. So it's going to be real fun. This is the bad of the bad at this point in time in the NFL. We're talking AFC South. But if you guys are joining us for the first time, do us a favor. If you're on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It enters you into win that Tajay Spears signed jersey giveaway, giving that away at the thousand subscriber mark. So we're just around the corner there. And then as, as, as always, check out the, the Morning Glory Show merch down below as well. We got the cups, we got the shirts, go check it out. But joined. By my co-hosts, as always, B Will at B Will TFTV and at TFTV Sports. How you doing today, B Will? I'm good, man. I think we should. Uh, there should be a law against air horns before eight o'clock in the morning, <laughs> especially when they're when they're getting streamlined through to my ears. Right? Yeah, they're a little least, louder than I thought it was going to be. At least we lie. upgraded. It's been Jake doing it. Jake's been doing it from his mouth for months, so <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm happy with the upgrade. We're finally in the 20, 21st century, but he didn't tell us he was going to do it. <laughs> nope, nope. Give you a great Kirk Cousins. You like that? But, yeah, I, I threw that in there right before the show started, and uh, yeah, we're, we're off the fly here already. But uh, – if you guys are checking us out in the comments, like Chef Rand, Big Dogs Gotta Eat, make That's sure right. you drop those score predictions down below as well. We're going to be talking about that at the end of the show, talking all AFC South, predicting those three big games. But on my other side, joined always by Jonathan Miller at Esports Valen. How you doing today, Jonathan? Good, man. Good. Got some got some awesome news yesterday that uh, the main man, the host here, Jake, is going to be a daddy, man. That is Congrats. exciting. Congratulations. Yep. Te team girl dad. To, man, that's so exciting, bro. This is your first one, right? This is my first one. Oh. We've been ex we, we're super excited. Uh, me and my wife, we got married. Uh, yesterday was actually our two-year wedding anniversary. We've been together for 10 years at this point, so I was a little late on the gun to, for the proposal. <laughs> but uh, she, she was definitely there to remind me. And just a little, like, little bit about me. Uh, me and my wife, we've been trying for quite a while now, and we actually were told, like, hey, you, you've got to do additional testing. Uh, this probably isn't going to happen naturally. We're going to probably have to go the IVF route. And literally, like, two weeks later, got the test back, positive. So we're super excited. God Amazing. is good awesome, all the time. Man. Love it. Appreciate Congratulations. It. Congrats, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate Let's it. Let's get some baby emojis, some some prayer hands in the in the yeah. chat. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Some baby emojis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, let's talk some Titans today. And uh, first injury report of the week just dropped last night. And it, it, it's a big one because this game could really go a multitude of ways, specifically with the quarterback position. We know. Anthony Richardson listed as limited yesterday. I think Anthony Richardson probably does get the start after missing last week. And, man, this, this guy is on the brittle bones committee leading that charge as of right now, uh, uh, right up there with Kyle Phillips. The dude has started five games, already two major injuries, but that may have not even been the biggest report to come out we see Josh Downs and Michael Pittman listed as did not participate. Michael Pittman actually went on IR right after this dropped, which is huge for this secondary. And the Josh Downs dealing with the toe injuries as well. This might be a matchup where the Tennessee Titans are looking at A.D. Mitchell and Alec Pierce as their leading receivers out there. If that is the case... Who are you putting Legereus Need on, B. Will? Who who is he shadowing? Well, they don't have a one. Yeah, I, it's got to be Alec Pierce. I remember what he did to Monty Hooker last year. I mean, it's it's got to be Alec Pierce. But <laughs> how long was it before Monty caught a stray? Seven ten. Okay. <laughs> well, I just I remember I remember what happened. You know, late in the game last year. But is I'm seriously, I think it's gonna. He's gonna probably. I don't know, man. I, I would say Alec Pierce, but then again, I don't think he would follow any of these guys. None of these guys deserve to be followed. I hate to say it. 
and maybe AD Mitchell, I'd say, is the most talented receiver out of that bunch. Downs is in the slot. We're not gonna have we're not gonna have Snead in the slot. I think McCreary can take care of that. Um, so I don't see I don't see with him really traveling anywhere. He might play to the wide side of the field. Who knows? You know, I think it's a really open things up and let Snead him himself travel, not with signing anybody, and that's gonna allow this defense to be even more predictable, be able to bring Snead and have him in the box a little more. I mean, you, sky's the limit. A week like this is when a guy like Denar Wilson is is just chapping his lips. He's ready to go because he doesn't have to worry in game plan for a true number one receiver like we fa- have to face in the first couple of uh, games of the year. We've had a number one we've had to navigate with every single week so far. And this is the first we were really want to do that. So this defense could really shine. I'm talking, I'm talking four or five sacks shine. You know, I, I think it'd be that good of a performance just because of the receiving options or the lack of that Indianapolis is going to have. But if it's AR, it might be a fun game. But then again, you know, with Flacco, Flacco's not going to have any room to to navigate out of the pocket, so it could be even better with him. But it's going to be interesting to see. I don't think he travels with anybody because I don't think anybody's worth traveling with. Agreed. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I don't think – similar to week one against the Bears, they'll probably be in more of those, like, zone kind of, like, setup defense where you're doing sim pressures and you just – and honestly, you kind of have more flexibility in that way too. You can kind of watch and see, you know, what they're giving you. But, yeah, I, I agree. I think the the Titans – this is a very favorable defensive matchup for the Titans going against this weak Colts offense – um, they're also missing one of their starting guards. I forget his name off the top of my head, but he's not playing. Also, DeForest Buckner still on IR. Um, DeForest Buckner has been historically great against the Titans. Uh, so not having him in that matchup is also a really big deal. So overall, the Titans are in a really, really good spot. But defensively, this should be a a be able to kind of build off of that defensive performance in Miami. This should be another one of those games. And we should be stoked that Anthony Richardson is playing because it looks like he's probably going to be playing. Um, and if he is, then even better. Jake, did you say the line moved when <laughs> when the Richardson news came? <laughs> line has moved quite a bit since it dropped. We uh, opened as one point underdog. Yeah, it was like a three point swing, two, wasn't it? Yeah. It's a two and a half point three. favorite now for us. So lots of movement on the line already. Uh, and Chef Rain of the comments saying Will Fries. Right. Uh, he is yeah. correct. That is the one yeah. that is on IR currently. He also says AD Mitchell is weak against press coverage, which kind of led me to my answer. If it's Anthony Richardson, I would prefer Legereus Sneed on Alec Pierce just because I We've seen what he can do to us. He can beat you deep. And that man is their trailing Burks. He's running deep every single route, and the ball just doesn't come to him unless he's playing the Titans. He's put Roger McCreary and Amani Hooker in a blender in the past. So I'm worried about Anthony Richard and the, Richardson and that arm strength and that just chuck it and fuck it that he likes to do. If it's Joe Flacco, though, I'm putting him in on AD because AD is geeked up at the line of scrimmage. That's something he does very well. I'm not the biggest – A.D. Mitchell supporter even coming out of the draft. But that dude can get open real quick when needed to. And he struggles with contact. P.K. was talking about it earlier this week, about there's whisperings coming out of that camp that the guy just does not want to get touched out there. And if he does, he will slow up. And this is a guy so far into the season only has 20 more targets than Jaquan Jackson, who has zero, by the way. The dude they almost has, have the same amount of catches, Jaquan Jackson and AD Mitchell. So I believe AD has six currently for 70 yeah. yards. <laughs> and uh that's with a 30 yard reception in there. So realistically, he has 19 targets for about 20 yards. So not a lot, not a lot out there. And uh I I think that's signs of things to come for his uh future. Well, Jerry, wow. We talked about it. Well, Jerry Sneed just deletes AD Mitchell, by the way. Because the biggest the biggest knock on AD is that he like like you said Jake his contact like you you watched him in college whenever he got bumped and he had really aggressive corner play he just he just quit on a play straight up like that was the one knock on AD where it was just like people worried about his effort or whatever yeah because when he gets bumped and and gets and someone gets aggressive and jaws with him then he just thinks that he can kind of just like pout and then he'll the refs will just like give him contact flags I I, I don't know so. If you want to just delete A.D. Mitchell from the universe, you just put Legereus Sneed on him. But I don't know 
that he's that big of a factor in that way. I mean, Denard might decide that he is, but something tells me that we're going to get more of this like Denard's going to be able to get a little bit more creative and and move move Legarius around. Might even send Legarius a couple times. He uh, Spags did that with him on the Chiefs a couple times, and he had several sacks in some of his bigger years. So I wouldn't be surprised if he if he dialed that up. But yeah, I, overall this Colts offensive it, it's fun. It's funny, right? Because a part of me, the way that I want to respond is that I want to say, uh oh, here we go. Like, this is a get right game. For, like, you know, Josh Downs is going to catch eight cat, you know, he's going to catch eight balls for 130 yards. But this is not the same Titans defense that we've been seeing either. And they've kind of proven that through the first four games. So, it's really interesting. I want to be like, oh, this is how we predict Colts Titans games. You know, we lose games we shouldn't. They play us super hard, even when they're not, you know, you know, I want to say all these things, but realistically, this truly is a, a different team, not necessarily for the be better in some ways, you know, offensively. But yeah, kind of strange to evaluate at this point. Definitely. And uh, I think it's a note of just talking about this Denard Wilson defense. Uh, I saw a graph that came out earlier this week through five weeks. The Titans are second in the NFL in percentage of, of just cover four. So going into the season, I don't know. We thought this might be a little bit more versatile. We'd see cover three, cover two. But primarily we would be relying on that man, press man at the line of scrimmage. And Denard Wilson has kind of shown us that, hey, I'm going to play the matchup. And we talked about it. We're probably going to be very blitz heavy. It hasn't been that to that point. But at the same time, we're not facing these premier quarterbacks early into the season. And it's more so, hey, let's bend, not break. Let's allow these offenses to mess up their own drives. And that's kind of what we've seen thus far, which is why they're number one in the NFL and yards allowed per game at this point in time. So I think. Denard Wilson has just proven time and time again of what a stud he is out there and probably how he won't be here for very long. But uh, going I think into – Before ahead. we move on that, I think he's going to – he has a lot of respect for Steichen, though, and he realized how good of a play caller Steichen is. Even though they don't have all the weapons they have, Steichen can still put together a dangerous game plan to beat us and has without. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's still – it's not a gimme game by any means. No, divisional games never are. And, and that's the thing. Like we have to we have to suspect that this game is going to be probably closer. It looks like and it appears that the Titans have the edge um, just based on how the Colts have played. But I, I know we think that it's probably AR, AR and it probably is going to be AR. But if it's Joe Flacco, they still this Colts team still scored 34 points <laughs> like they yeah, one of the best play callers in the league, buddy. They they lost to the Jaguars, but offensively, this 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 offense can move the ball, especially if they have Jonathan Taylor. Now, granted, this Titans defense has proven really good against the run game this year as well. They've always been good against the run, but this one this year too. So who knows? Even if JT is healthy, some he's been a super factor against us before, and he's been a non factor more times than not. So, again, just a really strange game to call. It's going to be closer than what everybody suspects, but you know, we'll see. We'll see where we're at. I think JT is probably the best offensive player out there amongst both teams if he can play, which is a big if at this point in time. He was also uh, a DMP yesterday for practice and did miss last week as well. So we will see as that progresses later into this week if we think he's going to suit up or not. But also of note, the backup in Trey Sermon, former Oklahoma and Ohio State running back, also DMP with the – collarbone i believe up top of my head so there might be a good chance that we see tyler goodson out there former iowa running back and deontay foreman they might bring him in but by <laughs> god they got to bring somebody in or there's gonna be rolling out one guy so i think steichen wants to lean on this running game and chef ran in the comments saying if i'm indy i'm taking the packers playbook offensively run the ball like crazy and try us for force will into turning the ball over yep. and I would definitely agree with them, but it's going to be real hard if you don't have a running back to run the ball. Anthony Richardson basically is the running back, but we've seen <laughs> how uh, well he does when he takes contact. Um, the Titans were the ones that knocked him out of the, the year last year in uh, Nashville. If I kind of knocked correctly. himself out if we're being honest, but 
And I mean, he does that and Will does it too. I mean, we saw Will die for the first down in Miami and get hurt his shoulder. So there's 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 a realistic possibility where we see Anthony Richardson and Will Levis start the game and then both guys go, you know what, I don't have it today. <laughs> and we say Joe Flacco and Mason Rudolph finish it out. That is a say, realistic possibility at this point in time. For the viewers that have kids, specifically boys, that want to play football and want to play quarterback, please have them watch this game as an example of how not to play the position between Levis and Richardson. It's going to be a shit show, boy. It's going to be, you talk about bad quarterback play, it's going to be so bad. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I can tell you right now, um, this is, I, I've been seeing some questions floating around Titans Twitter where it's like, this is the most, is this the most important game from Will Levis's career? Let me answer that question. Yes. Yes, it is. Up until this point, it's, this is the most important game because at the end of the day, his, his, he's currently at a crossroads and if he can come out and have a huge game, clean up the turnovers and look more of like the guy we expected him to look, then all of a sudden the whole pace and the whole conversation around Titans is completely changing. But right now there's very little hope that the Titans have their guy at quarterback. And if he goes out there and has another similar game where he's turning over the ball egregiously, we're going to it's things are going to continue to get real, real uncomfortable real fast because something to note, the Titans have their first divisional game against the Colts this week. Then after that, we don't see another divisional opponent, I think, until like week 12. So you just stay 0 and 1. Yep. And if you find yourself losing a couple more games, which you have Buffalo, you have good team, you have the commanders who were supposed to be a win at the beginning of the season. You have the Vikings who were supposed to be a win. At least I had them winning. Now that's. That's that's done with those. Those are good football teams better than we thought. So this season can really spiral out of control. If will cannot get this game in particular, get himself his first win of the season, get the Titans to two and three, which is a completely we get to two and three. And it's like we didn't even start and three. You know what I'm saying? Like there's so many two and three, three and two, two and two teams right now. So. It is. This is a huge, huge game. Getting a divisional win against you know, an opponent who has been traditionally very good against the Titans, you know, get to one and zero in the division. It just, it is a much bigger game than I think we're giving it credit for. I really do think that. So with, and this is, this is not a question for you, Jonathan, per se, because I know you weren't the curator of that content, but <laughs> for the people that curated that content, what is the difference between this week and last week, the week before? Why is now the crossroads? Is it just we're doing it for clicks, or is it are we having trying to have a serious conversation about Will Levis? It's just which one think, is it? I think it's the clicks conversation, right? Like <laughs> at the end of the day, you you every week seems to be the biggest week and the most important week, and it's going to be the same thing. But but where I will say I'm buying into it a little bit is just because of where we are with Will Levis. I don't think that the Colts game is a must win for the Tennessee Titans necessarily. I think it feels like a must win for Will Levis because of how, because of where he's at, right? Like Mason Rudolph comes in in relief and, and wins a game on Monday night. Granted, it was a poor offensive, a poor football team right now in the Miami Dolphins, but it's still a win on Monday night, right? Like he got it done, which says like, okay, if you don't muck this up, then this team is good enough to win close ball games. And so, with all the uncertainty around Will and how poorly he's been playing, I think it matters more that he comes out and has a good game than it does that we actually win, which is wild. Um, so, yeah, I don't think it's necessarily this week, and who knows, next week it's going to be like, oh, this is the most important game. You're absolutely right. At the end of the day, we're just kind of like, you know, creating, you know, hype content, click content. But I am buying into it's going to be – it's week six. <laughs> we, we and don't – we don't feel better about our quarterback than we did when the when the season started, and that is concerning. To ease the, Levis for him to ease the concerns, he doesn't have to be good. He just can't be the worst. I don't think he has yep. to be okay. No. Well, yeah, I guess he, he can't doesn't be have the to be reason we one lose will the Levis. game. Yeah, sure. Sure. And people will turn their they'll turn their ideas with two or towards him. He, as long as he ain't loses the game, people will say, okay, he's improved. That's easy true. to improve when you're at the bottom of the barrel. He just ain't done it yet. You Mason know. threw for 85 yards and completed what nine passes, and everybody was like, "Should he be the starter?" And I'm just like, "That's what? the 
dude. That's the like, standard. That, the lowest is set. That's the bar, and it's way, way, way down here. So you're yeah. you're you're right. You're right. It doesn't even have to be. He comes out and slings three hundred yards, four tutties. It doesn't even have to be that. It literally just needs to be. He played a clean game. He was efficient, and he didn't turn over the ball. Like if you can just be there, and that's the worrisome part, though. That's the that's the biggest thing I'm worried about. Is that is that where his mentality is now? Because you can't play quarterback like that. All right, let's just go out here and just not mess it up. Okay. All right. Don't mess it up on three. One, two, three, break. You know, like that can't, you can't play quarterback like that and, and expect to be one of the best or a top, you know, player in the league. You just can't. So who knows? Maybe we're light years away from that and he needs to just have a game where he's just clean and that's all that matters. The bad but, thing with him is he's like a volume shooter in the NBA right now and he's missing and you can't tell him to stop shooting. Yeah, except for instead of it just hitting the backboard of the rim, he's th- he's shooting, <laughs> but the ball's going directly to the other team. <laughs> yeah, I think every week going forward will be his biggest week. Is all we're going to hear, and that's that's perfectly fine because it is somewhat true. I've uh, given him and this staff a little bit of grace. I, I said it earlier before the season even started. These first four weeks of the the season, I don't think is going to be who this team is. So going through the bye week, hopefully they've sat down. They've kind of recouped. I think Brian Callahan is still learning what Will Levis does well and what he does bad. And I think in the beginning, we've talked about this square peg and a round hole analogy a couple times now. And I think it's a little bit more than that. I think it's uh, it's got some jagged edges in there. It's like you ever gotten a key printed in the past. After you have that old key, it fits in that slot perfectly. And then you bring that new one in there. And there's still some pieces you have to kind of layer into that lock before it works properly. I think that's kind of the stage that we're at at this point in time. I think Callahan is a very good play caller. And I've loved what I've seen thus far. I think it's going to change a little bit going forward. And I think we saw a little bit in Miami with them going under Cinder more. Uh, using more play action there. It's just unfortunate that Will Levis got hurt. And like Jonathan said, Will Levis doesn't have a win this season. The team does, but he does not. So it is important for that him to get that. I do not think this is a must-win game, but they have to find a way to come out two and two out of these next four. And this is the most winnable outside of maybe New England. So if you lose this week, you got to find a way to go into Buffalo or Detroit and come out with a win. And that's going to be real tough. So it might not be a must win, but it's, you probably should, you probably should win in Nissan uh, because it's going to get real tough, especially in that, that quarter three of the season when you have to face teams like, like Houston twice. And then you got to face Washington who has come out of nowhere and looking great with Jaden Daniels. And a Sam Darnold-led Minnesota team. These were games that we thought were going to be real easy ones earlier in the season. And that's just not the case at this point in time. So it's going to get real interesting real quick. That's why it feels must win, right? Because like you said, if if here's the thing. If Will goes out, and that's why I'm like, he can't just have like a, you know, don't turn the ball over type of day. He desperately needs a good game, not only for his confidence, right? But a good game completely erases this cloud that is this literal cloud that is hanging over St. Thomas Sports Park right now. Because if you go out and have a big game as Will Levis, then you erase that major doubt for the most part, right? And you're saying, okay, this guy, he is who we we thought he is. He just had a rough start. Then all of a sudden, the confidence of his confidence raises, the confidence in his teammates raises, the demeanor, the the chokehold of a demeanor that that B-Well has been screaming about for the first four weeks, that starts to drift away and go away. And now all of a sudden, the firepower that this team has added this offseason, all of a sudden, the Titans look like they can compete with anyone. And they desperately, desperately need that mental advantage going into this back stretch because the stretch of games that was supposed to be the easier part of your schedule is no longer the easy part of the schedule because of how well those teams are playing. So that's why this game is so critically important and why it's massive for Will, because if he sputters here in a very, very winnable game, a very winnable divisional game, then the, you kind of this this cloud that's been looming over him stays and potentially it gets thicker and you can't have that going into, you know, the the sixth game of the season for the Titans. And yeah, I mean, that's where I'm at. That's why I think this one is so important. 
And I think it's of note that this is a beat up secondary for the Colts. They're missing Juju Brents, their number one cornerback out there. I mean, Calvin Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins and Tyler Boyd, they're going to be open out there. It's as Will can find them. And that's going to be the biggest thing. We've got to see Will get that deep ball put together. We've very rarely seen it this season. And it's something that he does very well. This is a opportunity for you to take advantage of that. I want to see four to five deep shots in this game. If they work or not, I want to see them out there because that's when Will gets in his rhythm. Just like when Atlanta last year, we saw that first one to DeAndre Hopkins and then we were off to the races. He got that confidence up there. And we've talked about how high variance he is. And it's solely based off his confidence on the field. We've seen him come in there dressed down, head down, and he plays awful every single time. But if he is confident, he's screaming on the sideline, that's when that dude is playing well. So, Man, the guy's a front runner. I can't even t- – God, dog, man. Just thinking about it and seeing it. Oh, my gosh. And the thing is, is, you know, we're getting to the point where if he doesn't improve, this team's going to be made detrimental. We're going to have to trade Hopkins. You know, it's, it's just uh, – you know, that's the, that's the part that really irritates me. And it's not really anything that, you know, we – it's the team itself or the GM or the head coach can even control. This falls on one guy's shoulders. You know, and it, it just that's the thing. Are y'all confident that, that we'll see that version of him this week? I'm a little more confident than I normally am, but I I'll say that. I'll say I this. I think this will be the most cohesive on offense that we've seen to date under this new staff. I think they will put it together. I don't think it'll be perfect. By golly, it's not going to be fucking perfect. There's still going to be a turnover out there because we'll we'll do what Will does. But I think he will have his best game of the season. It's not saying a lot, but I think they will put points on the board. I don't know if they'll get 30 again, but I still think it'll look better than what it looked like in Miami. I don't think we're going to come away with five field goal in this game. They're going to they're gonna score in the red zone, I think. Yeah, I think my my body language says that I'm not super confident, and that's just because we haven't seen it yet. But what I am confident in is the stance that I had at the beginning of the season, the stance I had at the end of last season, and that's I saw enough from Will last year in a deep evaluation to know that he is absolutely – he can be the guy. I don't think that he's going to be in the mental gutter for the this entire time, and I do think he's going to hit a spark – And something's going to change pretty drastically, right? That's what I do think. I don't know if that happens that quickly as this Sunday, right? I hope it is. I hope that's the the difference, you know, that we see. But overall, I think he is able to put it together. And I think he is going to end up being the guy. I just don't know if that's going to happen this fast. My thing is, we just saw Jacksonville put up, what, 30-some points on his coach defense. If he can't do it this week, he ain't going to be able to do it. He's got to do it. That's the only reason I'm confident in it. <coughs> because the defense is not very <clears> – <throat> they haven't shown – you know, they've given up some points this year. Defense so, is bad. They're one of the worst in the league statistically. They're one of the worst yeah. in the league. So, if he cannot do it this week, I don't know what I'm going to say next week, man. I'm going to no, I'm gonna just come back and pull a U-turn and defend him and say he's our guy and see if that changes things. <laughs> it's really going to be dependent, I think, a lot on this offensive line because – the Colts, they do have a okay pass rush, primarily in the interior. Obviously, they're missing a big piece there, but a guy like Grover Stewart, who's going to line up head on head with Lloyd Cushenberry, it's going to be a little bit of a, a pain for him. And then they got Quiddy Pay on the outside. If he is on a MPF or Quiddy Pay is athletic. He might not be all technically there, but I loved him coming out of the draft. I was hoping the Titans drafted him. He just hasn't lived up to expectation, and some of the injury bugs have played off of that. But he can definitely he can definitely keep up with NPF, or maybe we haven't even talked about it. Leroy Jenkins. Leroy Watson might be out there as well. He's taking first think, snaps this two weeks. I think there's a good chance that Leroy plays. Maybe I think not so, start. too. Maybe not start, but I think there's a good chance he plays. I think he plays a lot of snaps pretty early. I think MPF it just doesn't have it in them. And then we get to see a lot to lot to versus um, Latham on the opposite side, which is going to be super fun to watch. Two first round picks of this year, two rookies that have had good seasons thus far. That's going to be really exciting. So 
Can this line do what they need to do? Can they get the job done? Pass pro, I think we we got to see an uptick there. But this is a offensive line that we rely on for the running game. And they are not doing their job there either. There was a graphic that I think 33rd team posted yesterday that Tony Pollard is like tied for third in the league and yards after contact. It's just very unfortunate that he averages negative yards before contact. Dude gets hit uh-huh. in the backfield every single play. And that is, Wait, is that, that Tony is Pollard? legitimate. Yes. Pollard Pollard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a really <laughs> that's an eye-popping stat. This poor guy is averaging third most yards after contact. Problem is, he's getting contacted in the backfield <laughs> a lot. Legitimately so, yeah. every play. And Wild. I feel bad for him because he came from – he's not used to this. No, he, he played behind a great offensive line. Yeah. Yeah. Playing, all the line in Dallas, so he didn't have to worry about this. That's so, okay. And he, that's, he, that's why he his hairline's going Memphis. back. He He – he grew up in Memphis. He it's look, it's the gutter on this offensive line. So yeah, I, I, for me on the offensive side of the ball, especially in regards to the offensive line, I mean, who knows, this might be a game where NPF gets to play the entire game and, and he only gives up a pressure or two. I don't know that this defensive line is going to be getting home very often. This is a much better, especially on the left side, uh, offensive line for the Titans, then I think a lot of people are going to give them credit for. And by the way, this was always going to happen. The offensive line was always going to have a little bit of a poor start. We didn't expect it to be as bad as it was, but we were always, I always expected that this was going to be the case. I think as we inch closer to the end of the year and these young guys get more reps together, I mean, there's a good chance that outside a right tackle, these four other spots are solidified. Like these guys just need reps. You know, they're not playing bad. Dylan Radens was the second best performing offensive line um, player on the team outside of JC Latham. Jake's we, crickets behind we him know too, that, Jonathan. Yeah. They, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. They, and, you know, Skaronsky, we know he's going to put it together. He's had games where he's kind of had his, his, his misfires here and there, but he's a really talented guy and he's going to clean it up. Uh, and then, you know, yeah, so I, I I feel pretty good about the offense, like the trench battle, if you will, on both sides of the ball, by the way. I don't know how well the Titans are going to get home uh, on, on the defensive side. Uh, we assume that Jeffrey Simmons is going to play, but who knows? He tore his UCL, whatever that is. Uh, just learned what a UCL was uh, with this Probably injury. fishing. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he's going to play or not. I, I think it's probably safe to assume that they held him out for that reason that he just needed that extra week. Um, but yeah, defensively and in, in the trenches, I think in many position battles, the Titans should edge them out. But again, a really hard game to predict and a really hard game to set up just because there's always that divisional buff where the team that's lesser favored has like can inch a little bit more. There's the historical factor of the Colts just finding ways to to play really well regardless of their personnel in Nashville. So who knows? Is it going to be one of those games where we win by 10 points? Um, they can all put it, you know, the Titans offense can put it together. That feels possible. Mm-hmm. And Callie did say, I, I will say this is kind of like not off topic, but like a different area a little bit. Callahan said, I, I don't know if it was in a presser or if it was, you know, on the Brian Callahan show or whatever. Uh, but this week he mentioned like, you know, a lot of the play calling, a lot of those situations were on him and he felt like he could have done a better job. And and there was a one instance where he actually explained that. And I thought that he articulated it really well. And it kind of helped me understand like, oh, maybe some of these situations weren't on Will. Maybe he did put him in weird spots where Will's just trying to he's just making his reads. I have to go here. Oh, OK, I can't go here. And then he's finding a mistake. But he's saying that it's not necessarily on Will and he's not doing a good job of reading the, the defense. It's that the play call specifically played into a poor situation and he tried to do his best to read through it and it, it got him messed up. Like, you know, like the five hitches that we saw that one play, that type of thing. He was like, you know, even though there were a couple of guys that were open on that and he technically by eye, the eye test didn't make the right read, but he's like, well, in that situation, the defense was doing this. And if we, if I had a different play call, then that read would have been easier for him. So it's that it's that he wasn't necessarily doing him any favors with these play calls. And that might seem like a cop out answer. I'm just saying, I think that logically as fans, we can get upset by but when when he doesn't pass the eye test. But what I think most fans should consider doing 
is try to understand the game a little bit further and understand that what we saw from Will Levis last year is still in him. He's still that guy. But now he is playing with an offensive guru or an offensive-minded coach that's now teaching him the game differently. He's, it, there's just different aspects to the game that I feel like we don't really take into account. So all I'm saying is we still don't know who he is. He's still playing terribly right now. So there's no excuse for that level of play. But what I am saying is that's kind of where my optimism lies and who he can be and why he has to play more games. And if you watch any of the content from the Titans, any of the pressers, then you'll see that from Callahan. He explains it all. And that's a big reason why I like Callahan because he's very open and elaborates really well and articulates kind of what he's, his thoughts are. So it helps us understand on our side. Callahan is a really good leader for taking the blame for his guy. I'll just say that, you know, it's a, that's what a leader's supposed to do. That's what a head coach is supposed to do. He's supposed to eat the bullet, take the blame and be able to articulate why. And he's misleading people a little bit. If he, did he use that five hitches in, in particular? Um, Please not, don't tell me he used that play. Not this week, but he did. No, no, not this week. That was just kind of my Mark. example. But oh, okay. I was about to say because if he did, he's really misleading the people. Because yeah, he, he just didn't, he didn't you don't throw a specific the, play. You don't throw that hitch on that play at that time. So no. you know you can you can blame the play call all you want, but that's Will Levis. You know, and he can he can say that for people that you know don't really, I guess, understand the intricacies of it and the timing of when things are supposed to click, especially in the offensive threes and such. And people are going to buy that. And people are going to say, yeah, he's right. You know, Will Levis, it's not all Will Levis' fault. <laughs> a lot of this is, you know, and, and that's why I wish I would have said this before the bye week, but I don't know if we had a show or not. But this is a really good opportunity for Titans fans to look around the league and see what quarterback play is. Not what it has been for us, but what it is and what it can be. And that's what you use to evaluate your quarterback with. You don't just – because right now we're evaluating – it's like uh, you're looking at the recycling bin and the trash can and trying to say, well, which one is, is cleaner? No, you need to look go look at the other side of town and, and see how clean it is over there. And that's really what you can, you can realize, like, hey, this is just not good enough. This is historically bad. This is one of the worst guys in the league. We cannot get behind this. And that's what I wish I would have said, you know, leading up to the bye week, let people see that. I mean, there's good quarterback play going around this league. You know, and it's, it's just, just you got to see it, you know. Is it concerning that Will Levis at this point in time is more handcuffed than a rookie Jake Browning was under Callahan just last season? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, that's huge to me. So what does that say about Will? It says a lot, it says a lot, but maybe it clicks. Maybe this it maybe this is the wake up call. I mean, his job is on the line at this point in time Since because we've talked about it and how he should start this entire season, regardless of how he plays. I don't think that's how Brian Callahan sees it. This is not a guy that he drafted, it's a guy that he inherited. And he chose to inherit him. Don't that's get me a step wrong. Child. Yeah, exactly. It's not people it's gotta not realize his baby. that. So it's not his baby. It's not, it's not his it's, baby. He knows it. He's not Carthon's baby either. Carthon He's, wasn't at Carthon wasn't at that damn what is that restaurant that uh Vrabel and Tim Kelly was at after Will Levis's pro day? Carthon oh, wasn't no. there. Yep. Vrabel <laughs> and Kelly was. Carthon did I don't even think he went to the pro day. I don't I still haven't found that out yet. Carthon didn't was go Carthon, to nothing. He don't go to the senior go to, bowl, he don't go pro days, he just seems his guys. That's what that's he what went, they he, said. He went to they Alabama said Carthon party. wasn't doing nothing. He, they said he wasn't doing nothing that, that offseason. They said he wasn't the GM. He wasn't doing shit. He wasn't doing nothing. I want to know if he was at that Will Levis pro day or not. He said Kentucky too far. Yeah. I don't blame but, him. You know it's not the guy. That should have been the sign to Brett Vrabel in. 13 and a half games. 13 and a half games is how many games Will Levis has played. How many turnovers in 13 enough. and a half games? It's just not enough. doesn't matter. He could have 200 turnovers. doesn't matter. 13 and a half we games not enough. <laughs> yes, it not is enough. plenty. 13 it's is enough. plenty. Nope, we don't know who he is. It's Who's we? Josh we Allen threw 17 picks his rookie year. How many touchdowns? More like than Will Levis. Three or something like that, 24. Will Levis ain't, ain't close to 20. He's not even close to 10. The point I'm trying to make is that great quarterbacks – aren't great out of college most of the time. Agreed. If you, if you give them proper resources and give them a good environment, 
then you can find out if they are who they are. And we, I'm saying that we don't know that yet. I'm going to keep saying that until probably like week 10 ish. If it goes this point, if it goes the same as the first three weeks for the next three or four weeks, then yeah, I'm going to throw my, I'm going to, I'm going to toss my flag up and we'll be, and I'll probably be done. But until then, I just need, we, we, he needs more time, bro. I I promise you one of two things is going to happen. We're going to get to like week, you know, uh, eight, nine, 10. And then it's going to be like, uh Oh, well, I mean, Hey, you gave him a chance. You did everything you could. You set him up for success. You bring an offensive coach. You improve the line. You improve the weapons. You improve the defense. You improve everything around him. And he's still not the like, then you can't. It's like, okay, let's go get our guy. I, I have no problem with that. I'm not trying to be a Will Levis apologist, but I am trying to relay to the world, or at least the some odd people that are watching us, that truly. You cannot expect him to come in in the first 13 games of action in his career and for him to be the guy. You can, however, expect for him to not be an absolute tornado disaster turnover machine. And that's what he is right now. So everything, all the criticism he's getting is completely warranted. I'm just trying to make the argument that I don't think that's who he is. That's all. Thanks, MB. Yep, You're MB one of four that. people. We gotta, see the, we gotta see the glimpses, man. It, it, that's the thing. We have to see improvement, and we've seen a very slow progression for him. He has gotten better almost every single week to this point in time, but it's so incremental that it's still bad. You have to you have to at some point in time take that next step forward and at least be average. You gotta be the reason that this team can rely on you. We just gotta because if not, we're gonna find another way else. Hey, stop that, the bleeding, right? Like I totally get it. Hey, the, the kid has got a reading test on Friday. We've been trying to teach him how to read since Monday. It's Thursday, and he's still on the first sentence. He ain't gonna pass that test. You're talking we about reading. Seen... We're trying to get this kid potty trained. He's it, still shitting his pants out there. Hey man, I'm just saying. It's just that's where we're at. This guy ain't even got to Miss Lennon. Even... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did it again. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. He's doing that yeah. out on the field. Yeah. Right yeah. in front of us. Mom, I threw up. <laughs> All over himself. He does it every week. I froed up again. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I yeah. seriously though, I mean, it's that's why it's so important. And if you can, to watch quarterbacks from around the league and see how the game is played around the league. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Uh, shout out shout out to everybody in the comments join join people like chef ran who uh what did he say something about confidence uh there's so many comments today guys i appreciate chef, it chef chef uh, ran might be titans content like the titan he is on every though. single show bro he is on every, every single show he does not miss a single show from anyone not just ours confidence is earned uh confidence <laughs> is earned in him as well so uh and a shout out to Lumen shout second on the, the like button who may have also disliked afterwards because we didn't put his comments up there, but we appreciate it. Uh so bros network, Sony Keely, don't tell us to try and understand <laughs> the game further. We are mad online, which is Titans Twitter in general. Right. Um, Stoney's pissed. Oh Juku. Yeah. Stop. Take take the logic and throw it out the window. Yeah. yeah. Um MB, this is outrage uh, culture. Comments. Stevie uh BOE Gordy TV still want to see Mason games with five field goals. I still don't want to see Mason games with five field goals. Definitely no. agree. Which well, I was Nick about Fult- to say Mason Kinsey back here. Right. Mason <laughs> Nick Fulton needs his flowers. Uh, Shout out to Mason sure. Kinsey. Yeah, wherever he is, whatever car he's he is selling currently. <laughs> no, uh, hell no. He's close to this team. I guarantee it. He's ready. We'll see him again this year. <laughs> Oh Lord. He doesn't go away. Unfortunate. <laughs> it's unfortunate. He is eternal. He is Mason and Kinsey. How about how about so let's have some positive Titans talk. All right. How about Titans Hall of Fame, Ring Hall of Fame, future Hall of Famer, Titans Hall of Famer, not NFL Hall of Famer, Titans Hall of Famer. Nick Westbrook Akina getting the, the recognition he deserves throughout this year and earning it and just still sticking around and being the guy. Dude. What are y'all thoughts on that? He does seem underutilized, doesn't he? 
This is where we that's, wanted this that's for the conversation. Westbrook, Akine, though. <laughs> that's you what, wanted him we as say wide we receiver. We do not five. need to use him more. And now the coach is saying, we've got to use Westbrook Akeem no more. <laughs> Look, Calvin, not getting it done. DeAndre Hopkins, future Hall of Famer, who is he? Tyler Boyd wasn't the guy. Somebody get NWI in the game, all right? That's the, that's the missing piece here. That's he why we're not to, moving the ball. He said we've got to get NWI involved more. <laughs> uh, what, I don't even think we talked about it last week. As soon as Mason Rudolph came into the game, he just unlocked Traylon Burks. Traylon Burks got like the first pass from Mason Kinsey, which uh, I, I found hilarious. But I mean, that's I that know, second. I don't team know if we need to see connection. any more NWI. Yeah, that's it. It is what it is. But we've talked a lot about this front seven versus their front seven. Let's go ahead and flip to the other side because this pass rush, this this front six plus Arden Key is very good. So. I think we've seen Jeffrey Simmons miss the last uh, the Miami game, and that was Tavondre Sweat's coming out party. Best game by far. And as of right now, Tavondre Sweat, number four ranked interior defensive lineman as of all of PFF. So Tavondre Sweat is definitely showing out at this point in time. Um, so what do you guys – how do they combat – a offensive line that is actually very good. Uh, obviously, they're missing that right guard, but they still got Quentin Nelson out there. We'll see Jeffrey Simmons and Devon, or we'll see Devondre Sweat against uh, Quentin Nelson for the very first time, which is going to be a, a huge matchup for years to come. We're all mm -hmm. anticipating. How do they get this done and provide pressure? Because I don't think we're going to see a lot of blitzing in this game again. I think we're going to see a lot of mush rush out there, especially if it's Anthony Richardson. The question is, how does Quentin Nelson block Jeffrey Simmons and Tavondre Sweat at the same time? Hmm. Let's see. That's going to be an interesting matchup. Um, Ryan Kelly, who's that? Their their center right. That brother's about to get pushed into the atmosphere. I, I don't know. I think he I, hasn't been practicing either. Tavondre Sweat is exactly who we thought he was. I had him in my mock draft to the Titans for a reason. I'm taking my victory lap on Twitter right now. Like I'm literally just like streaking down Broadway in excitement because Tavondre is the guy who we, we said he was going to be, you know what I'm saying? Like every time it's like, well, the knock in on him is this, or the knock in is that he's not going to play many snaps. It's like he is destroying every expectation that anybody has had for him and had his best game of the season. He's only going to get better. And by the way, he had this best game of the season without Jeffrey Simmons. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? <laughs> so when these two guys are healthy, like as the, we talked about the offensive line improving over time, watch this interior defensive line improve as the games go by. And I don't know. I mean, yeah, the interior offensive line for the Colts is traditionally very good. Well, they're missing one of their starters. And Ryan Kelly has been put in a blender by the Titans and Jeffrey Simmons many times. So you throw Tavondre Sweat in that mix and, you know, hopefully Arden Key – can build off of the Miami game, get some pressure on the edge, and these guys can get to work. But we the, we also saw against in the Miami game, Denard got really creative with those sim pressures and and got to the edge and had some guys like you know Jarvis Brownlee is really aggressive and fast and really good in the run game most of the time, and he did a good job setting the edge. Roger McCreary, we've seen him do it effectively many times as well. Lejarius Sneed also very capable. So I'm really interested to kind of see how this offensive scheme for the Colts goes against that because really that's the conversation it's like what are they going to do to the Titans defense not the other way around because I think Denard is going to be set up in a really good spot for that reason yeah I think I agree I, Sweat's really impressed me especially with his ability in pass rush uh, that was a you know a knock I had against him coming out that could he do it consistently and affect the passer consistently and he's proven to do that you know and that that's been amazing you know he's been a really great pick at 38 so far you know, and, you know, I'm really excited to see the future between him and Jeff, especially if he continues to trend in the same direction that he's trending. It's going to be a really, really disgusting defense if we could add a good edge guy. I don't I haven't even looked at who's in the, you know, coming out free agency with Ed edge. I doubt it's going to be anybody you know, make him amazing. But, you know, this this defense needs a little bit of edge help and it could be a really, really scary defense. So. Really excited to see that. Really excited to see what they do, what Sweat does against Quentin Nelson, because this is going to be his biggest test of the year so far. So 
very interested to see with what he does and how he navigates against against Nelson. So, yeah, I'm imagine excited. taking Rook Aroraro instead of uh, instead of Tavondre Sweat. Imagine. Well, yeah. You could say be the same very thing about Ad Mitchell, Gudjean. You know. Let's Brady trade up also for Jackson Power. Jackson Power. John. John Jones. He hadn't even played John yet. Jones. I don't know. <laughs> I don't forgot his name. Bro wanted him in the first round. And he doesn't remember his name now. Uh, John he's dead Jones. to me. <laughs> he's a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you talked about it with Ryan Kelly, how he's going to have a real tough outing. I think Dalton Tucker, who's the current right guard AI generated name here, is going to have an <laughs> awful day. And I'm not ready to shout it from the rooftops just yet, but I'll, I'll whisper it. And I, I think I think Tavondre Sweat might Dylan be better Williams. than Jeffrey Simmons very soon. Oh, he might be there. Oh. Wow. I, I, I'm super impressed, and uh, I wasn't super impressed with the draft pick at that point in time. I mean, I was fine with it, but I didn't love it either. And uh, he's proven me wrong. I mean, dude is showing out, and he has that little bit of nimbleness to his game that you don't see out of guys his size. He is a one of one at this point in time in the NFL, I think, for as big is, as he is. Is Sweat capable of getting five sacks in a game? In a game, I don't think so, and I, I don't well, think he has got a to. Guy that's, we've got a guy that's capable of doing that. Has done it. Well, that's I mean, not, that's not is game, Will though. Levis like, you know, a guy that's going to score four touchdowns every game? Absolutely he can do it, not. But is he going to do it his, a lot? Simmons' baseline is is above league at, above above average. You know, Simmons. Well, let's not just let's not jump the gun. That's not that's unfair to swear. Yeah, yeah, I'm not ready for that conversation. I don't think. No, but I will to say, Tavondre Sweat, Tavondre Sweat can be the reason your defense gets five sacks. He can be cool. the, the that, that's him. He's the glue. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah it's just a different. Yeah. It's a, he's a different player. But yeah, damn. I mean, such a good pick. That might end up great as good as JC is. He, yeah. That might end up being the best pick of the draft or for, yeah. for the Titans. I think the Brownlee pick is going to be a, a. I don't know, man. I mean, we Rams really. This draft is looking so good. It's yeah. shout out to uh, me. We got Cedric Gray coming off IR as well. Didn't play well. Who at any? Yeah, exactly. Hasn't played well at any point in time through mini camp or training camp, and then went down with the shoulder injury. Uh -oh. Full participant as of yesterday, so he's set to come back from IR. Maybe not this week. Probably next week. He's got his twenty-one day window open, so maybe that's a guy that we can see progress down the line as well, and at least offer something on special teams. Maybe he can come as a rotational player for Kenneth Murray and Ernest Jones. Ernest Jones also on the injury report, still limited though this week. But let's go ahead. We need to get out of here, so let's hop into these picks for the week. And as always, we're predicting AFC South matchups. B will the all ball knower at first, currently at 12 and 5, me at 10 and <laughs> oh, 7. Oh, oh, my headphone and, went out. What was that? Uh, uh what? Um, and then we got Jonathan Miller, uh, at eight and nine currently, Mr. Optimistic. The unball knower. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we got three great matchups this week. Texans at Patriots, Houston favored by seven, Jaguars, Bears, Chicago favored by two and a half. And then Tennessee, this has been changing. We were one point favorites at that point in time when I made this graphic yesterday. We are now two and a half point favorites. So it is definitely moving our direction. But let's go ahead and start with the probably the easiest matchup of the week. Texans at Patriots. Drake May getting his first start of the season. Houston coming off a big win against Buffalo. B. Will, who do you have in this game? Before we get to this game, I, I just want to say, y'all see the record. Y'all might want to start parlaying my picks every week and sending me a <laughs> dividend. I, I'm giving y'all, I didn't give y'all 12 wins this year. But... For this game, Houston versus New England, I am going to say for my Super Bowl favorites outside of Kansas City beating New England, and I think it's not going to be close. I think it's going to be double digits. Like, I would, if I was, if this was like, if this segment is betting with B-Will, I would say Houston would alternate spread over 10 points. That's how bad I think this can get because uh, Drake May starting, it's not the person you want to start against D'Amico Ryans and Derek Stingley and Will Anderson and, you know, Aziz also Aziz and, you know, these that's not the guy. Those aren't the guys you want to play against. And I might add, is Danico coming back this week? I sound you know, I think I it's know. I think it's four game suspension. Was it a four game suspension? If it was Danico's so. back. So oh, yeah, this yeah. defense is getting filthy. 
and the offense is able to, they finally found a way to run the ball. So I think Houston by double digits. What about you, Jonathan? Uh, yeah, I think I think you hit the nail on the head. This is not the game that Drake may needs to be starting for the Patriots. Um, I think that Drake he'll probably come out and and there's going to be a spark. Everybody knows that in the NFL, if you change quarterbacks, regardless of the opponent, there's always this like magical buff that's applied to the team that has this new quarterback, regardless of who they are. Just like Mason Rudolph got the got the magical buff, but yeah, I, I, this is this Texans team is very good. Obviously, they played a very grindy game last week against Buffalo. That turned out well for them. Um, but yeah, I I would take the points at at this. I mean, I, I I'm with Boo. I don't know if it's double digits, but the Patriots are not a very good football team with Jacoby. Who knows? Maybe they get that little buff with Drake May, but I think it's still going to be the Texans. Hey, I think. I'm glad you real quick, John Jake. I'm sorry, but I had to I had to say this, Jonathan. I'm glad you brought up that game against Buffalo. Osama Ben McDermott should have been fired for what he did last week. I'm just I'm just saying. I don't know if y'all seen what he did last week, but it was terrible. It was egregious. <laughs> it was really bad. They fumbled that. I'll, I'll say, I think John or Josh Allen, one of the best quarterbacks in the league. I think the Bills are pretty fraudulent at this point in time. So I almost don't view that game as huge as it was. They've had two uh, weird games. Yeah. I two mean, you blow out games. the Jacksonville Jaguars 41-10. Awesome. Cool. They're the worst team in football at this point in time. Not not Agreed. huge. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Houston, I think, is very good. I think they're number one in the AFC South for by a pretty wide margin at this point in time. But at the same time, we were talking about it before the show. I don't I don't know if they're a Super Bowl contender at this point in time. There's also just not a lot in the FC South at the top. Also, That's Nico Collins to IR. That matters. Nico's been looking oh, like one of the best. He's looked look like a top three receiver in football. Yep. You know, like yeah. Nico has been fantastic. 15, like literally 15 plus targets a game for CJ. So you take that away. Tank Dell is a really good receiver. He's been underutilized, but he's not Nico Collins. Nico is winning. Nico is a absolute gladiator of a, of a specimen of an athlete. He's massive. So you take that out of the offense. Stephon Diggs is not necessarily that body type either. So a big missing piece for the for the Houston offense. But regardless, they're still going to be able to run the ball effectively. They're getting That's great the play from the offensive them. line. And C.J. Stroud is still C.J. Stroud. He's still going to find a way to distribute the ball. So I'm not too concerned, but I do think it's noteworthy. Yeah. 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 So I, I'm in agreement. I, I have Houston as well. So we're, we're all three in agreement there, which leads us into Jacksonville at Chicago. Chicago favored by two and a half. Caleb Williams coming off, uh, I think, the, his best game of his young career. And mm -hmm. Jacksonville – on top of the Colts last week, just like in the graphic right here. Uh, Jacksonville, I still think they're probably the worst team in the AFC South, even with the win over or over the Colts. I I just don't see it. And Trevor Lawrence, thank God they paid that man because I love him in that uniform. And the throwbacks. <laughs> hey, shout out the throwbacks looked good. I don't, I don't, I don't throwbacks hate the look Jacks. Good. Yeah, I don't, I don't, it's not the mustard yellow green color rush that they've used the in borders. the past. Thank God. So I liked him. But in this game, I'll go ahead and go first and check in my notes. I do have the Bears winning this game. Caleb Williams, Roma Dunze, Keenan Allen. Uh they're they're gonna they're gonna start clicking. I think they're gonna start putting more points on the board. And if Indy can score 30 points on them, I think the Bears can as well. So I think. The Texans Patriots game might be a little bit closer than what you guys were predicting. I think this could be the blowout of the week. I could see them winning by definitely double digits at this point in time. Um, Jonathan, who do you have in this game? Yeah, I like the Bears. Um, I think they're coming off a big win. Obviously, you know, nothing like both of these teams coming off of off of big wins, but both of them beating teams that are not very good either. So it's kind of hard to say like, hey, these are def definitively the guys. This is the type of players they are. But I like the Bears. I like Caleb Williams, you know, starting to kind of put it together a little bit, starting to cook a bit. Um, and again, like they beat the Panthers. So at the end of the day, like we'll see. But I think the Jags are pretty comparable to the Panthers. So for me, it's going to be the Bears. And I think it's by a larger margin than two and a half points. 
Yeah, I think the I think it's going to be Bears. I don't know if it's going to be by double digits or anything, but I think they could beat them by a touchdown. You know, in yeah. in Chicago, so Chicago's going to be rocking. They got a lot of optimism up there because they won a game or two. So you know, it's going to be interesting to see how Caleb responds. To that does he get the hero complex like he's possible to get and think he needs to go around and you know run around like Mahomes and you know we'll see. But I think it's I think they could beat them by a touchdown. Yep, and DeAndre Swift putting it on as well the last two weeks he's looked very good and yep. we, we, he did not look like that against us so we'll, we'll say that um which leads us into the final matchup with indy versus the titans in nissan stadium this one should definitely be interesting so we're going to give a score prediction with this one as well uh but let's go ahead maybe we'll start at the first one jonathan who do you have in this game and how do you think it breaks down uh you know my eight and nine record is be, you might as well just put like a Titans logo over my face and put a, a red clown nose on it because I am 0-4 predicting the Titans this season. I had them in the first three games, and then <laughs> against Miami, I said, you know what? You're not going to get me again. And sure enough, they win the game. So at this point, clearly, I don't know anything about Titans football, so I'm just going to throw stuff at the wall until it sticks. Uh, I'm going to go with the Titans scoring 27 points in a win against the Colts. I think the Colts <laughs> – this is ridiculous. I think the Colts score 17 points. <laughs> I think they probably score more than 20, but I'm going to go with 17 because why not? 27 to 17, the Titans get the win. I like it. What about you, Be Will? Yeah, Mr. Optimus. I say I'm, I'm ready for you to say it. I mean, the Titans <laughs> are going to win. It's just like, how do you? Where I think do you the Titans it? are going to win too. Yeah, I just don't think it. I think it's going to be 27 Probably between two teams. Points. I think it's going to be 27 between two teams. I think it'll be Titans like 16 10. That's what I think. 16 10. I almost yeah. went that direction. I did, but I think after the buy, what's the line at? Does anybody know? Does anybody comments on what the lines at? What's yeah. what's the I points? Really quick. 32 and a half. Probably over. <laughs> it, it's got to be total 40, 43 right? and a half. 43 hey. and a half. There you go. 43 and a half. Wow. Interesting. So pound the under. Didn't is expect that. Yeah. Yeah. I say 16, 10 Titans. So I say maybe 16, 16 13, 10. 16, 10. Well, it is squeeze a touchdown like, somehow. It's looking like week one out here in these predictions because all three of us agree on every single matchup and we well, all are picking well. the Titans. All so, right. I have I them the winning 24-13, and Pittman okay. was a big part of it. I think they will – like I, I said it earlier, I think this is the most cohesive offense that we will see to date out of this team. I don't think they score 30, but I think it looks good, and I think they score touchdowns. And I think this might be Tajay Spears coming out party more so than it is Will Levis's. Just the eye test, I think Spears is better than Pollard. At this point in time, Pollard has just broken off some huge runs. But when they have the ball in their hands, Spears is much more elusive, and he makes guys miss in the hole. He he does get he doesn't average the yards after contact like Pollard does, but he looks good. And I think it's only a matter of time before they start utilizing these backs in the receiving game. And I think he's going to break off a, a long one here pretty soon as well. Maybe it happens this week. So. Uh, Breaking it down, we all agree, Texans, Bears, Titans, I have them 24-13, Jonathan 27-17, and B-Will 16-10. <laughs> That's a wild score. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, not happening. yeah, Steam Tajay from uh, Stony Keeley, Stone Bros Network in the comments. Who is uh, eulogizing out. Ojuku? Oh, man. He, Little R.I.P. to the boy. I, I think Keeley already wrote one. He, uh, him and, I'm pretty uh, sure he did on, on Stacked in the Box. I think, JT, I think JT as well also wrote one. JT Runke over there. The Hot Read Podcast. Check out them, all of 440 Sports. Go check them out. Sorry um, for y'all's loss. Rand, yeah. Leroy Jenkins season. Yeah. Sorry for um, y'all's loss. Chef <laughs> Rand, 23-20 Titans. And That's a weird Stevie, score, too. 28-13. 28-13 so, is very, weirder than mine. <laughs> very weird. But – uh. We'll see what happens. This is going to yeah. be a fun week. I will be in attendance. First game at Nissan Stadium. I fly into Nashville. I fly out 5 a.m. I get back to Oklahoma at midnight. So it's going to be a long day, and I'm hoping it is a good day. But yep. if you guys are checking wait, it out down wait, where there. Where are you sitting there? Where, where are you sitting? 
I'm on the 50 yard line. I don't remember the, I, I'm pretty close. I got some good tickets I bought yesterday. A buddy of mine hit me up. A buddy of mine hit me up. His brother is not available to go. They have season tickets. They're on the south end zone, four four rows up, like row oh, man. 120 row D. And I am fighting demons. Like, man, I got to make that. I have a card show this weekend in Nashville all three uh-huh. days. So, mm. uh, might have to make it yeah. happen. Yeah. If you guys are fans of the show, shoot me a DM. We'll, we'll meet up. I'll be looking for tailgates and stuff while I'm down there. Come, come shout out your boy. But, This has been the Morning Glory Show. We appreciate you guys, and we will check you guys after the game, if not on Thursday. Peace.